In South Africa, a broad coalition of doctors and activists is campaigning to demand access to safe abortions. This while illegal abortionists with access to stolen drugs are doing a roaring trade in our city streets. Health E! News finds out more about these unscrupulous dealers. Legally, non-surgical abortions can only happen before 12 weeks. But illegal practitioners don't seem to care, despite the risks of bleeding to death. We went undercover and phoned the number on a flyer. The person who answered asked how far along the pregnancy was. How many weeks now? It's um, 16 weeks. 16 weeks? 16 years. Okay, fine. I hope you're not pregnant. 30 minutes later, we met the dealer near the Randburg taxi rank. She must take five pills and put them inside his yeah, vagina. Yeah, vagina. Inside, vagina. Uh -huh. Two under the tongue. Two under the tongue? Yes. Then we wait. You said he mustn't drink cold drink. Yeah, yeah. no beer, cold no drink. coke, no yeah. milk. For that day? For that day. No going to the toilet for at least an hour. Yeah. After one hour, she can be able to go to the toilet. Uh -huh. 600 rands later, we were on our way with the tablets, no questions asked. These unscrupulous dealers even advertise outside the offices of the Department of Health. Luke Lamprecht, an advocate who fights for children's rights, has seen all sorts of horrific cases. So the 15-year-old girl gets referred to me by the Johannesburg court and she's been charged with murder. So it's OK, well, I take the history, see what happened. Basic, similar story, had an older boyfriend, uh, and we're talking about adult older boyfriend, adult older boyfriend obviously legally had sex with her. She then falls pregnant, he disappears. She then goes to the one of the street pole kind of abortion uh, clinics. She believes that the baby is going to be born dead because there is the termination. And he says the baby will be born stillborn. It's like a miscarriage. If there's complication, go to the hospital. Nothing, no complications. She actually then gives birth to this uh, to this child after the contractions start from the medication, and she puts the child in the in a bucket. Now it's the bucket that you go to the toilet in, and she believes that this child is dead. The girl's grandmother called the police when she made the gruesome discovery. The child goes for a post mortem. Post mortem, they do the hydrostatic lung test. The lungs float, which means the child lived on its own, which means it's now murder. The legal consequences for the person illegally supplying the abortion medication are few, says Dr. Yogan Pele from the health department. The only way you can lay a charge against them, as far as we are aware, through our discussions with the SAPS, is if an individual who was wronged by a, an illegal abortionist lays a charge against that individual. Ironically, the charges can only be practicing without a medical license and dispensing without a license. Okay, so they're, they're really quite odd charges, and I don't even think there's penalty clauses attached to them. The illegal clinics rely on the fact that nobody they've sold drugs to will report them. Most people will go to uh, an illegal abortionist because either they don't trust the state system or they don't have access to the state system, or they feel more comfortable doing it quietly and secretly because there's also, we must accept, there's a stigma attached to it. We asked sexual health expert Dr. Tlaleng Mufukeng where the illegal abortionists get the pills from. For me, the biggest disappointment is that the manufacturers of these medications in South Africa, we've reached out to them and they've completely showed any disregard um, for the fact that their pills and their brand is being used in this manner. And there are anecdotal reports of uh, drugs being stolen. Uh, we know that uh, there's, uh, there is some shrinkage of drugs from our health facilities, that you will find a health worker taking drugs and selling it uh, to someone else to use, or to use it. There are instances where health workers as well have been performing illegal abortions. After the break, less than half our public hospitals offer abortions, and when they do, there are barriers. Why isn't anybody standing up about their lack of access and the clinics closing down and the stigma? And basically what the answers were, there's a pushback, there's a pushback. And for me, that's not enough. 